All right, here we go. Module two, equipment, software, and services, part one. Buying stuff, downloading stuff, installing and setting up stuff. Forgot the ING there and install. No, oh, well, you knew what I meant. This is non-negotiable. You need a microphone. You cannot podcast with your built-in laptop mic or with your webcam microphone. You can do this. Like, technically, you can do it. But it is the podcast version of writing a contract in crayon or eating cereal with a fork, okay? You're going to seem like an amateur and, and as if you don't care enough to invest in your own brand. If you're a business taking this course, if you're a CEO or the representative of a brand, I, w I want you to think about whether or not you'd show up to any other form of creative media with like, I don't know, with half your clothes on or half prepared or without your hair combed or, you know, not looking nice or not sounding nice. Would you show up in an unprofessional way to any other endeavor you would do? Don't do it with podcasting, okay? The surest way to have bad sound is to use, you know, a gaming headset to record your audio or your AirPods. They don't sound good. Now, if you're a guest on someone else's podcast, I guess that's their problem to deal with. But if you're creating your own, not a gaming headset, not your webcam microphone. I mean, look what I'm using. You don't have to do all this, but you got to do something. And a microphone is a great way to take your quality from dude gal isn't even trying to dude gal actually cares because it does a lot to change your audio quality. A microphone is arguably the largest investment that you're going to make. And you shouldn't start until you can make it. And I know and I realize that every podcast guru says, just start. You got to just start. If you don't just start, you'll never get started. Like, no shit. If you don't start, you'll never start. Duh. But they say it with mystical music on in the background or something. And people are like, oh, yeah, yeah, you're right. But those, go those gurus are not me. And I know a lot of those gurus. And, you know, they're good people, but they don't have as many successful students as I do. And they haven't been doing this for as long as I have. You don't just start. And they probably don't have all those things because their clients or their students started a podcast in their living room on their laptop microphone, and listeners couldn't stand to listen to it for more than 30 seconds before they spontaneously combusted. You don't want to sound like shit. You want to sound good. And the greatest thing you can do to sounding good, short of acoustically treating your space the way that I, I have, is to have a decent microphone and to practice good microphone technique, which I will cover in another video. Decision number one you have to make, as far as microphones are concerned, are do you want an XLR or a USB? These are just connection types. You know what a USB is. An XLR is a three-pin connector. You maybe have never seen one before, but it's the way that analog microphones connect to things through a three-pin connector called XLR. If you're podcasting on your own, and by that I mean if you're a solo caster, or if anyone who is podcasting with you, like a co-host or a guest, is going to be remote from you, in the same way that if you were having a Zoom meeting, you're alone in your, you know, your bedroom or wherever you are having the Zoom meeting, and everyone you're talking to is part of the same Zoom meeting, but none of them are in the same room as you. They're all remote to you. If that's your situation then a USB microphone is 100% what you want because it's going to be the easiest. It's going to present the least complication, and it's, well, it's going to be the easiest. And you can make you get some pretty good USB microphones these days. If you're podcasting with other people in the same room as you and recording into the same computer as you or the same device as you, XLR is the kind of microphone you want. Now, there are other reasons you would choose XLR over USB or vice versa, but for you, a first-time podcaster, they're not relevant. I'm not going to dig into them. The decision is primarily based on the number of microphone connections to your computer or to whatever you're using to record. If you need more than one, you want XLR. Do not, please, do not share a microphone between two people in the same room as a way of saving money. I know there are microphones out there like the Blue Yeti, the, the scourge of every podcast engineer's existence. 
that have uh, this mode that I can't, I think they, I can't remember what they call the mode, but it's apparently turns on two opposing capsules so that two people can use the same microphone. Don't ever do this, okay? It causes problems in post-production, in editing, that I will touch on in a future module. But to be sh- to be short, it puts both people's voices on the same track, which means it may, which means you can't edit out one person's voice without editing out someone else's, which essentially means you can't edit out mistakes. So you don't want to record into the same microphone if you are in the same space using an XLR microphone. Or if you're deciding to cut corners and get a USB microphone for two people recording the same uh, space and you're trying to save money, don't do that. You'll be sad you did that. Here are some USB microphone considerations. USB microphones have come a long way. They really have. And many of them are fantastic. Many of them are fantastic, especially for podcasters. But most of them are terrible. And you can make a bad choice rather easily, especially if you're just on Amazon looking for USB microphone, right? You're going to find a whole bunch of options, and some of them might be 20 bucks, and you'll think, that looks great. Look at the reviews. It's not great. <laughs> it's not great. You want something designed specifically for podcasters. You do not want something designed for game streaming or YouTubers. Those creative mediums have a video element, and because they have a video element, Poor sound is more forgivable as a result. Usually you're not listening to videos with headphones on. You're listening to them in the open air, right? So if there's bad audio, it might be annoying, but it's not as bad as if it had bad video. But with podcasting, all you've got, in most cases, although there are such things as video podcasters, in most cases, all you've got is, well, the audio. So if the audio sucks, there's nothing to distract you from that. And headsets and all that, those would be terrible. So don't use those. And you should budget somewhere between $100 and $300 for USB microphones. Okay? That's about what it's going to cost you. $100 is a little bit on the low end. $300 is, you know, it's the higher end, but it's also right around where you start to get some really good mature options. So here are some USB microphone suggestions. The Shure MV7. So this is a $250 microphone, and it is the microphone I would suggest to any podcaster starting. I actually suggest it as an XLR option, too, and I'll explain why when we get to that slide. But if you can swing this mic, this is the one you should buy. This is the USB mic you should buy. If you need something more affordable, there's the Audio-Technica AT2005 USB. Retails at $80. There's the Audio-Technica ATR2100X, which retails also at $80. The minimally viable options here are the Audio-Technicas. They are not my first choice. I want to make that very clear. But for the budget restricted, they are the minimum quality of good USB microphone that I would suggest. Do not go get an Amazon Special or a Kmart Blue Light, for those of you who are old enough to remember that. Don't do that. The Shure MV7 is my first choice. And it's also, to be fair, considering how expensive microphones can be, it is pretty budget-friendly. I mean, the microphone I'm speaking into right here is a $500 microphone. I have a friend, Perry Carpenter. He runs the 8th Layer Insights podcast, which is all about cybersecurity. He has a Neumann U87, which is a $3,500 microphone. So when you think about it that way, $250 is pretty, pretty budget. Now, this microphone, the MV7, has a double benefit. It has both USB and XLR. So if you ever find yourself suddenly in need of an XLR microphone, maybe you take a trip and you're at a conference and and they're like, hey, yeah, we're going to do this awesome uh, interview with this guy and you brought your microphone, right? Let's plug it into the the audio interface device. And you're going to be like, oh, no, it's only USB. I don't have that kind of mic. Well, if you have the Shure MV7, it comes built in with both options. So it's got some nice flexibility there. Here are some considerations for XLR microphones. XLR connections are not accepted by any standard computer. There are some very fancy audio specific computers that might have XLR inputs built into them, uh, but not any computer you're ever gonna see probably. So they require an additional piece of equipment in order to connect an analog XLR, that three pin connector I talked about, 
uh, to the computer. And that device is called an audio interface device. Now, buying an audio interface device is not going to increase your cost too much compared to having to going the USB option. However, well, not too much because XLR options for microphones, there are some really good quality ones around 100 bucks, And the average cost of an audio interface device would be like 200 250 somewhere in there. So whether you go the USB route with the Shure MV7 or you go the XLR route with a $100 option for the microphone and a $200 cost for the audio interface device, you're spending kind of the same money. So it comes out in the wash. My preference is XLR. But for beginner podcasters especially solo casters, there's no reason to get XLR, all right? It's, you're going to just complicate your process. You want to be able to plug your mic in and just talk into it. But if, but if you're in a situation where you need XLR, as I outlined before, if you're in the same room with another person or something like that, well, you've got to do XLR. And don't worry, you're not going to spend that much more money. So here are some XLR microphone suggestions. Now, unlike my last set of suggestions, where I had like a minimally viable USB option and then the Shure MV7, every single option that you're about to see is a chef's kiss microphone. I mean, it's they're so good. I've used them all. I've owned them all, the ones I'm suggesting. And they're all in the affordable range, at least in my opinion. The Shure MV7, again, I said that has an XLR option. So, hey, buy that. The Shure SM58, you know this microphone even if you don't think you do. If you've ever been to a karaoke, this is the microphone you're singing into. And the SE Electronics V7, also around 100 bucks, same as the SM58. All of these microphones are great. Now, I do suggest the MV7 as an XLR option because it's an excellent mic that is specifically designed for podcasters. But, and it has some really cool feature set with some software that comes with it, but in truth, the SM58 and the, and the V7 are just as good and... You can see by the price tags, uh, much more budget friendly. Now, I want to be very clear here. The microphone I think you should get is the MV7. I think that's the mic for podcasters right now. That's the best one on the market, in my opinion. Be it XLR or USB for podcasters, that is the, that's the dude. That's what you want. Now, if you get an XLR, you need an audio interface device. We talked about this. So here are some recommendations for audio interface devices. If you need just two XLR inputs, the Vocaster 2 by Focusrite is the way to go. Now, I should mention here that uh, Focusrite has been a sponsor of mine in the past. However, this recommendation is a genuine one. I'm not going to give you a, uh, an affiliate link or anything like that. You can go find this on your own. I'll talk about it in the last slide where you can find these products. But I do feel like I should mention they have been a sponsor for, um, for clarity's sake or for full disclosure and so on and so forth. I'm using one right now, in fact, a Vocaster 1 because I only have one microphone. I don't need to. If you need four XLR inputs or rather up more than two and up to four, the Zoom PodTrack P4, which is another device I own. They've never sponsored me. Uh, dang them. Don't buy their stuff. I'm just kidding. Is the way to go. It's $200, just about, plus $20 for the charger. Now, the reason you have to pay extra for the charger, I don't really like that Zoom does that, but this product, the P4, is a battery-operated unit. It runs on two AA batteries. So it'll last for, you know, about four hours or three hours worth of recording. But, you know, if you're traveling, and this is a great thing to travel with, then you're going to probably use those batteries up pretty quick, and you're going to want the wall charger. So by the wall charger. Pro tip, if you do get the Zoom PodTrack P4, you can replace the wall charger. You don't have to buy it. If you have a MacBook uh, and you have one of those large power bricks for the MacBook, you know, the newer ones, I guess, MacBook Pros, that will charge the PodTrack P4. So if you have one of those, you don't have to buy the, the charger. If you need more than four XLR inputs, which is, I mean, you've got a six-person podcast, I guess, but no more than eight then the Zoom PodTrack P8 is the way to go, and that one has a power pack that comes with it. You don't have to, you don't have to finagle any alternative power solutions to that one. You might be asking why I don't recommend the Rodecaster by Rode, the Rodecaster Pro. Everybody knows this device. Uh, if you Google it and you don't know the name, you'll probably recognize it. 
Rode is a great company, Australian-based. They make great gear. They make good microphones. They make now good boards and other equipment. But the Rodecaster is trying to be two things at once. It's trying to be a plug-and-play easy solution for beginners like you. And it's also trying to be an incredibly powerful solution for professionals like me with amazing onboard built-in effects and features. The result of this, this kind of conflict in goal, is a piece of equipment that is very easy to use poorly. So whenever a new podcaster tells me they have one, the first thing I do is I spend 30 minutes walking them through how to basically disable and dumbify all of the built-in effects so that they don't sound over-compressed and terrible. It's just, it's a lot of kit for a beginner, and it's a $600 price tag. So it's a significant investment. Some people will say, hey, you're just one podcaster. Get a Rodecaster Pro anyway, just so you have it. $600 is a lot of money, man. <laughs> uh, so that, that's the reason I don't recommend it to beginners. I've owned a couple. Uh, my last studio, in fact, I own two. And they're, you know, they're great if, if you need six, seven, eight inputs. But, um, and if you know how to use it really well. But if you're a beginner, it's way too much. Where can I buy all this stuff? Well, from my personal store. I'm kidding. <laughs> Uh, if you're in the United States, my preference is always has always been Sweetwater.com. They've got great service and they're fast. Uh, and also, if you've got a sweet tooth, uh, Sweetwater always sends a small pack of like candy in everything they ship. So, pro tip, another pro tip: order everything separately, and you'll get a ton of candy <laughs> in all these different boxes. You can also order most of these items from B&H Photo. I think price-wise, you're not going to find too much variance between B&H Photo and Sweetwater, but Sweetwater is much more likely to have like temporary holiday-type sales. So if there's a holiday in or around the date that you're going to order these, there's a chance you'll get a better break on Sweetwater.com than you will on B&H Photo. But otherwise, prices are probably going to be the same. I would avoid Amazon at all costs. Uh, not just because it is not uncommon for people to send you something you didn't order. You know, they'll stand up a store and they'll say they're selling you X, Y, Z, but what you get is a knockoff. Uh, but for other reasons too, but that reason most of all. If you don't live in the United States, I don't have any great suggestions just because I don't have the experience necessary to make a good one. But I would suggest if you're having trouble finding a dealer, that you can always go to the manufacturer's website like Sure, Sure.com and use that website to find local retailers or dealers in, in your country, in your local area. That's probably the best way to do it. If you can order directly from manufacturer, you will usually save more money because you, uh, you, know, you won't have the markup of retail. And that is, uh, that is uh, it for this module. So go make your shopping list, get your orders in, and then sit back and wait for hashtag audio equipment Christmas. <laughs> if you want to use this hashtag, you can. Uh, I just put it there because I thought it was funny. Next module, get to it when you're ready. Again, as I said at the end of the last one, I understand not everybody is going to be able to make these orders right this second and uh, have them in the mail by Friday. I get it. Remember, three months of additional support after this course ends so that if you, know, so if you have to take more time, that's why you get those extra three months. All right, so I'll see you in the next video. Until then, take care.